I'm Liz Brown Swanson and welcome to a very special edition of Around the Peninsula. Today I'm at the beautiful Terranea Resort with our longtime outstanding community leader, Larry Clark. It's so great to be with you, our former mayor of Rancho Palos Verdes, former California Coastal Commissioner. You've done so much in our community and I'm so happy that you're here with us. Um, you're here today to share your story of survival. You are surviving pancreatic cancer, which is one of the deadliest cancers out there. And you're doing great. We're so glad that you're here, especially this is, Nash, this is Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month. So right. that's why you're wearing all your purple. I wear it all the time. Actually, it's one of my favorite colors, Liz. But uh, thank you for inviting me for this. And uh, purple is a pancreatic cancer color. And it's one of my favorite colors. Now it's my favorite color. So how are you doing? You were diagnosed in March of I this was. year. I was. It was a, a life-altering um, diagnosis, obviously. Uh, the fact that uh, someone comes down with pancreatic cancer. Pancreatic cancer uh, in the community, medical community, is, is the, uh, one of the scariest cancers because uh, it has a survival rate at five years of only 6%. And 85% uh, of those diagnosed with it when they're diagnosed, it's too late to uh, remove the cancer. And so it's a matter of, of uh, survival. And uh, it's, it's a very daunting uh, journey, or it can be. When you, so this was in March, we, did you have symptoms? How did, how did, talk about the day you were diagnosed, what led up to that? Right. Um, another problem with pancreatic cancer is it has very generalized symptoms, and that is one of the issues. And there's no pretest for it. There's no markers that define it at this point. Um, with me, the beginning of this year, I started to have general abdominal discomfort. Nothing that felt serious, but it w wouldn't go away. I'd also uh, started losing weight. Well, I'd been losing weight uh, working out, but I was losing more mm -hmm. weight. Um, and then I started to find that when I had a big meal, it felt like it was hard to digest the meal. So I went to my gastroenterologist in Torrance, one of the top ones in the area, uh, Dr. Jerry Cohen, and he thought it was uh, perhaps stress. I just lost one of my little corgis to uh, cancer after 12 years. We we're doing some remodeling on the house. And, um, you know, I had retired a year ago. Uh, it turned out it wasn't. Uh, we did some tests, preliminary tests. We did a uh, ultrasound, showed nothing. The only way, <clears throat> excuse me, the only way to really diagnose pancreatic cancer is by a uh, MRI or a CT imagery scan. And uh, we did that on March 8th. Uh, Dr. Cohn called me back in the very next, that was a Friday, called me in on uh, Tuesday and uh, told me that uh, I had a large mass on my uh, pancreas, which was, you know, uh, an out-of-body experience. Uh, we immediately uh, went into a, uh, a mode of uh, rapid action. I was at Torrance Memorial for an ultrasound uh, endoscopy, specialized one, the very next day, uh, where they took a sample of the tumor in my pancreas by going through the stomach into the pancreas, it was um, analyzed and it came back uh, cancer. Mm -hmm. um, fortunately, and you know, uh, I'm very fortunate because then I was put in touch by uh, my gastroenterologist with one of the top leading uh, pancreatic cancer surgeons in the country, Dr. Nicholas Nissen at Cedar sinai And literally, uh, from the uh, first visit with him to surgery uh, was uh, literally five days. Wow. So the treatment options that you had was exactly what you did. There were, uh, you didn't have all different options that you could choose from. You needed to have the surgery. Well, was... it, 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 what's key is moving as fast as you can to a comprehensive approach, depending upon where your pancreatic cancer is. Mine was in the tail of the pancreas, which was fortunate. It was fairly encased, but it was large. Um, but um, like I said, uh, the fact is that 85% of those diagnosed, it's too late because it's already metastasized. And so uh, I was very fortunate before the surgery, I had a full PET scan to see if there was cancer anywhere else. And then the morning of the surgery, um, they went in first and explored to see if they could see any signs of cancer. Unfortunately, they didn't. It was a six and a half hour surgery. I lost 40% of my pancreas. I lost my spleen and 20% of my stomach. But you didn't lose your fighting spirit. You were amazing. Here we are seven months later. Right. And you right now are involved with the trial. Um, 
yes. program. Talk about what's going on well, you medically. Well, I was, again, doubly fortunate because besides being one of those few that can have successful surgery, I was then qualified for a phase three clinical trial nationwide. One of the sites was Cedar sinai And that in that trial, they have an experimental pancreatic cancer vaccine. Um, I qualified for the trial, and I was fortunate to be randomized onto the side of the trial that got the vaccine. I'm six months into that. In fact, it's a six-month trial, and, and tomorrow's my last treatment in the trial where I'll be getting vaccine followed by chemotherapy. Um, I think it's saving my life. Right. You know, we all know you in the community as a fighter. You are unbelievable. You have 40 years experience experiences your executive for the Air Force and the government you've done so many things but to get that news I mean nobody wants to hear they have cancer right. especially when we know pancreatic cancer the reputation of being so deadly um, where did you get your just continue that spirit of fighting like I, I just uh, I as soon as I heard about it and, and it processed and within a day or so I said you know I um, there's a reason I have this and I want to beat this, and I want to do something on a larger scale if I do beat it to on the bigger fight against pancreatic cancer. So what I immediately did is, is I sent out an email, email to a family and uh, a large group of friends uh, in, indicating what had happened. And uh, then I kept a journey of email uh, news to my friends and family over the period of it. And it helped me because it was unbelievable the response I got. The community absolutely will support you. And of course, we're here at Taranea today. This was a place that you came when during your recovery because you were remodeling. You were in the middle of remodeling your house when you right. were hit with this. Yeah, we spent we spent some time here uh, during after surgery uh, for a few weeks, uh, which was really uh, great because it was uh, the timing on all this and no one picks the timing to come down with cancer and right. pancreatic cancer but it was very uh, very fortunate that we could stay here um, and uh, I could recuperate for a part right. of that period. Well you've done remarkably well so well that um, being an inspiration you were awarded and I was at that ceremony recently the Spirit of Hope Award by a very in important organization which is the Pancreatic Cancer um, Action Network, Action Network. Right. and uh, it was a big gala in Beverly Hills. I was lucky I was invited to go with the group from Taranea. There's a lot of members of the community there. What was it like for you that night to be presented with that spirit of hope for just your fighting spirit and beating this cancer? Well, it, it was magical. Uh, it was an incredible evening. Um, the spirit of hope, I accepted it on behalf of not myself, but all the pancreatic cancer survivors and those that have passed, that have fought the fight. Um, every year, 45,000 uh, Americans are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer and 38,000 die. And, and that, is, that is humbling. So it was a magical evening. Pancreatic Cancer Action Network is the largest pancreatic cancer nonprofit in the country. It's headquartered here in Manhattan Beach. <clears throat> and I've gotten involved with them because, as I said, I really believe in this larger fight against pancreatic cancer, and we have to get more research and research funding. I know right. that evening the award presentations were being done by Patrick Swayze, who passed. Lisa, Lisa Swayze. Raising awareness, like we were talking about, when you see that it is one of the deadliest cancer, but there's very little funding compared to other cancers. Right. Is that right? Yeah, in, in the five deadliest cancers, uh, it's the fourth deadliest. It's projected to become the second deadliest by 2015. And it gets by far the least amount of funding. It's about a hundred million a year compared to, for example, breast cancer, which almost gets a billion dollars a year. All right. I was on the uh, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network, which, by the way, the website is pancan.org, and I know one of their goals is to um, double the survival rate. Right. Because what is it now? Single digit? You have up yeah, to five it, years if you're diagnosed. It's again of the t top five um, deadliest cancers. It's the only cancer in that category of the top five deadliest that has single digit uh, survival at, at five years. So the goal would be to double that and they do have um, some legislation in Congress asking? It, it was there was some legislation passed to uh, continue to fund research uh, for a variety of cancers including pancreatic cancer that the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network leadership worked on diligently with members of Congress. Uh, it's an incredible organization and they hold events all the time. In fact, this coming Saturday in Orange County, there's a pancreatic cancer walk and run at one of the major uh, regional parks. Uh, and just to kick off the 
Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month, they had at, in Manhattan Beach a uh, uh, purple light in which uh, pancreatic cancer survivors and families of survivors and families of those that have passed from the disease all um, lit glow sticks, purple glow sticks at sunset uh, as their names were read off of those uh, survivors and those that had passed. It was quite an emotional I, event. I can only imagine that. And um, but mentioning that, again, this is Pancreatic um, Cancer Awareness Month, the month of November. To draw more awareness, we have, um, we're going to be, be meeting up with a marathon runner named Julie Weiss. Weiss. She um, has been running, she ran 52 marathons, is that right? In, in honor a year. of one her father week. that passed. Right. She ran one a week. And this month she's running, uh, walking with um, pancreatic cancer patients around California, right? Every day. And she's coming here to Terranata to join with you and meet right. you. And you got a big day because I know NBC News is going to be there. We're going to be there. Um, and so we're going to take a break to share Julie's story, and we'll be right back. Unfortunately, my father, who was my, my biggest fan, was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer in 2010. And sadly, I lost him just 35 days after his diagnosis. And, and I felt so, so helpless. And I didn't know what to do, and I'd, I looked more into this disease and found out how it's the fourth leading cause of cancer death in the United States, the lowest funded for research, and I knew right then and there that I had to do something, something big, that was something to make a difference. I had to do something that was based around my love for my father and my passion for running, so I decided to run 52 marathons in 52 weeks and have a goal of raising $1 million for the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. And I completed my journey of 1,362.4 miles at the LA Marathon on March 17, 2013. And to date, we've raised over $200,000. So we're just getting started. So we'll talk about your journey right now. This is um, Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Month, the month of November. You are continuing with your cause to raise awareness every day this month. You will walk with um, someone that is dealing with pancreatic cancer we're wonderful to have you here with our former mayor Larry Clark talk about what's going to happen today and what you're doing this month well I was I was so excited to meet Larry at the pancreatic cancer action networks gala and I um, decided to do something big for the month of November because we need awareness for this disease so we thought of this campaign called 30 days of hope so each day I will run or I will walk by somebody affected indirectly or directly by the disease. And when I saw Larry's story at the gala, I was, I was so inspired. And his story just was the true, true meaning of hope. And I was um, just sort of drawn to it. And, you know, I met him later that evening and had found out that he had actually found out about the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network through my 52 marathon journey. Actually, it was an article in the LA Times. So it was really meant to be that I'm here with him today on day four of 30 Days of Hope. And here we are in this beautiful land of Terranea. Terranea is just amazing. And we're going to have a walk and a talk and just promote the awareness and hope and love and all we can do to gather enough money, inspiration, all of that to continue this fight so that we can beat pancreatic cancer together. It's going to take that togetherness. Is so, And it's so much bigger than the marathons or me. This is about the people that I'm running for. So every marathon that I ran, I dedicated to somebody who is either fighting pancreatic cancer, who is a survivor, or somebody who, you know, had lost the fight and so I drew inspiration from them and when I would hit my darkest moments I would call upon my father the angels or or sometimes I would even have the survivors just um, waiting for me at the finish line and we would run across the finish line together so that was really awesome and I'm actually getting goosebumps right now talking about it because that was the most special part of my journey was the the people who I was running for you can actually go on to marathongoddess.com and there is a donation link that goes directly to the pancreatic cancer action network so all donations are tax deductible they go straight 
to the charity is and the uh, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network is just it's a number one charity. They have the most advanced research out there for patient support, and they're just such like they're like my family, and they I couldn't have done it without wow. them. So it's a wonderful charity, and their their website is pancan.org. Julie Weiss, Larry, she is remarkable and appropriately called the Marathon Goddess. You right. spent some time with her and just trying to continue to raise awareness and research. Right, she, and uh, she is amazing. Her father passed from pancreatic cancer. He was a runner. She's got involved in running because of him, and she dedicated, after he passed from pancreatic cancer, to running a marathon a week for a year. She ran 52 marathons in one year, finishing with the LA Marathon last year and uh, has raised awareness and, and raised a couple hundred thousand dollars for pancreatic cancer research. Because people watching right now that, um, especially for someone that's just been diagnosed, I know you say you're talking to people now and you're finding mm -hmm. out you know, that someone's cousin's been diagnosed or even a friend, so right. what, what do you tell them how to deal with this? Well, um, the first thing I tell them is stay positive. Even though it, it's, it's difficult with this disease, stay positive, reach out, and, and um, tap into the resources that are there. One of them being, of course, Pancreatic Cancer Action Network because they have patient services, they ha know what's going on in terms of clinical trials, where the research is, et cetera. And so it, it's really important though to stay, stay positive, build a network around you of family and friends that are supportive and don't give up uh, because there is hope and um, that's one of the messages I, I like to communicate. Where do you dig to get your hope? I mean, you're... It, I, I, you know, honestly, I've always been a fairly positive person. Um, I believe from the beginning that I could uh, beat this disease. Uh, it's still a journey. I'm uh, not, a, not out of the woods, but I'm out of the dark forest, I think. And, uh, you know, uh, as each succeeding month passes, and, and hopefully every year, um, I can hope that uh, my example and others' examples of beating pancreatic cancer will uh, be the inspiration for others to uh, stay positive. And of course, as we said earlier, the challenge is, again, for people in terms of like the symptoms. Right. You don't really know, but I remember talking right. with you before we, on, um, on the phone about this, and you were saying certainly with men, there's just certain things that you can look for. Right. Um, what was, would you kind of repeat, remind sure. us of those? Sure. This is very important for anyone. And pancreatic cancer tends to hit people in their uh, late 40s, definitely 50s, 60s, and 70s. That's the range. And it's both men and women. Uh, but they're very generalized and they're often overlooked or misdiagnosed. And, and it's typically um, discomfort in the abdomen. Um, it can be middle back pain caused by the tumor, which hasn't been uh, di discovered. Uh, weight loss associated with that. Um, dis uh, discomfort with uh, digesting food. Those are the generalized um, symptoms, but you know they can often be overlooked and thought of as irritable bowel syndrome or gastritis or, or just stress. Mm -hmm. And the fact of the matter is right now there's no blood test, there's no early um, indicators for pancreatic cancer. If someone has these symptoms, two or three of them, they should definitely contact their doctor and, and pursue a possibility of a, a, a CT imagery scan or an MRI. Okay, and in terms of preventative as well, you know, we also had talked about, you kind of must look back and say, was there things I did, you know, did I drink, was I a smoker, are there certain things that really might increase your um, chances of getting something like this? Some of the recent research, and by the way, pancreatic cancer cells, it turns out, the, in the last few years, the research has shown that a person who comes down with pancreatic cancer has had pancreatic cancer cells for 10 to 15 years. It's just unfortunate that they don't present themselves until it's too late, uh, relatively late. Smoking um, and uh, you know alcohol are contributors, although there's conflicting um, evidence about uh, alcohol. Um, smoking uh, apparently has a link. Uh, being overweight potentially has a link. But there isn't any particular item. There's also some genetics involved, in fact, uh, President Jimmy Carter, this is kind of interesting, I didn't know this, but Jimmy Carter, President Jimmy Carter, lost his father to pancreatic cancer, lost his two sisters to pancreatic cancer, and his brother. And yet, at, he's 88 years old and still with us. But there's definitely, in some families, a genetic link. 
The BRAC2 gene, apparently, if someone has that besides having a higher propensity for a woman to have breast cancer, has a higher propensity than the normal public to have pancreatic cancer. Not at the same uh, percentage, but a higher. So, a lot being done um, on the forefront, though, in terms of immunological uh, research and treatments, like my uh, vaccine treatment, uh, personalized going from generic treatment uh, to personalized treatments, and that's exciting, but there's a long way to go. And this, you said this is your last week for your vaccine treatment, and then? Vaccine and chemo. Tomorrow is my last in my six-month uh, part of the clinical trial, and then I have six months of once-a-month booster vaccine shots, which I'm very fortunate to be getting. And, and Liz, I'd like to present you, uh, before we end this, with uh, the Purple Pancreatic Cancer Awareness Wristband. Thank you. I, I wear will one. Put this um, on right now. And uh, it really raises the awareness when you uh, when people see this and you tell them what it's for. Right. Purple is the pancreatic cancer color, uh, as we talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. It's my favorite color, and uh, I want to see that we can do all we can to um, curb this very dreaded disease. Well, I, I am honored that you gave me this, and you are truly an inspiration. And for anyone diagnosed with any kind of cancer, whether it's pancreatic, it's very scary. Right. But you are certainly helping to just sort of make people feel more comfortable um, just by talking and sharing. A lot of people don't want to talk about it. And um, you are helping to raise the awareness. Your wife at the event that I went to, the gala, I enjoyed that she said your nickname is Lucky Larry. Yeah. And that's because you always get a good parking spot. But you said you, parking st you said you feel lucky still, even with what you're going through? Yeah, I mean, obviously I wasn't lucky to get pancreatic cancer, but I'm incredibly lucky to have gone down, down the journey the last seven months I have with it and be a survivor. And hopefully will continue to be a survivor for years to come. And, and as I said, my calling now is to raise awareness and funding for research for pancreatic cancer because it is a very deadly, deadly disease. Okay, well, we wish you the best health and uh, we look forward to having you back here with an update and uh, thanks for all you're doing. You continue still to do for our community and it has been wonderful to have you here. And with that, I'm going to remind you Thank all, you, if you want to have more information, a great organization, again, is to go onto the Pancreatic Cancer Action Network. Their website is pancan.org. That'll do it. At Terranea, I'm Liz Brown Swanson with Larry Clark. Thanks for joining us. See you next time.